That's how you sometimes catch me uh, going off screen to have a have another bite here or there. <laughs> I mean, feel free to show. You can make us all jealous with your food. So, mm. don't worry about it. Well, this is just a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, this is my cup of tea. Ah, yeah. Like, but... yeah. Hmm? Cheers. Cheers. I've seen these. I don't know if you've seen on like Zoom because a lot of people have meetings. I've seen this hack where you can put like the tea bag left over. Yeah. And you just stick it, but it can be wine. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, I just said I don't know how many we will be. I know that Lars is on a plane, so we shouldn't wait for him. But um, maybe we should get started with... Um, I started the video recording. I'll behave then. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there anything that um, is on anyone's mind? Any open questions that we should uh, address? Otherwise, I will. Yeah. The only things I have are just a couple of a quality of life uh, kind of. Uh, either questions or requests, I don't know. Hmm? Um, just one is, um, <clears throat> um, there's no, in the, in the uh, when you in, reinstall the, uh, was it the VizX files uh, now, the, the, it doesn't seem to throw up any options for, uh, when you're doing a new project, for a setup that is default to .NET. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all like framework setups and things mm -hmm. like that. No setup for, and I would have thought we'd be moving, or you'd be moving, closer to like kind of making it easier for a dead. I mean, obviously it's not impossible, but the but the the way I do it is like set it up for framework, and then I have to go in and you know da, 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 convert it ready for .dot net, and that's pretty mm -hmm. that's an inconvenient thing, unless I'm missing a trick. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, good. Um, you might be. Correct in in that um, assessment. Um, let's see. Um, because it, it's these um, what they call the, the um, project templates. So if we were to start up a new and create a new project. And filter on end driven, yeah. And end driven here, we only have sort of the old stuff. Yeah, the old stuff, and and this one. Yeah, um, good. So that's something that we uh, probably should uh, fix a new, a uh, couple of new um, uh, templates to to get started. Um, I think it's useful. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, um yeah the the trick would be currently to sort of go like this i'm gonna make sure that it's on screen and uh, go like this then add a new project with uh, uh, let's say we want to do bpf application in .NET Core, I think it's this one, yeah, so I only have six here, and to, to get the, the model and everything to work with this, I would um, um, just drag it over here um, that would be the, the quickest way but then we would need the um, the yeah instead of doing that I just package. go into I go I manually go into the um, the, the CS proj file mm -hmm. uh, of of the uh, not of of, of, of the uh, of the model that you initially set up and just manually 
redirect to change all the stuff that you change in there yeah to convert to it. Um, so, which is, yeah, it's not impossible. It's no. not too bad. It's so, so what what we um, w are waiting for a bit is the end of support for uh, Vision Studio twenty nineteen, um, so that we could focus on twenty twenty two because the install is different and and then uh, the framework is even further away and and when dot net. Uh, I guess it's 2024 they will release the next um i don't know what the time schedule is but once that is available we can uh, uh, even further move away from the, the not dot net framework because i think that will be built on uh, uh, .NET 7 so currently the the visual studio is built on framework and also Visual Studio 2019 is even older um, um, harding, hard to use the, um, the common builds for .NET, uh, for .NET 5 and, and forward. Good, yes, we'll take that into the pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, um, another thing that I was um, aiming or planning to show is some new stuff that we did for um, REST and um, exposing ourselves as uh, REST services. So um, I guess we can just take this, um, um, well, what should we? We're going to take this one and just save it as a an example um, on temp drive rest uh, server I'm going to call this so um, being a rest server is um, uh, well I guess it's we have quite a few interested parties in just pulling data easily from from rest so and uh, turnkey is of course has the ability to to produce the ui but you don't necessarily need to to use the ui you, you can uh, go with the exposing the information as rest just as well and uh, um, one would do that by simply uh, selecting the the view model and let's see if I can make this it switches when I sw uh. so when I select this one it should be rest allowed and I should set that to true and then I guess this is new behavior it switches directly when I so I'm gonna find it here instead you one thing rest allowed uh, <clears throat> and put that to true to be sure to um, um, when I run this I'm gonna um, let's see I'm gonna run it uh, um, which is best I'm gonna run it in with some uh, server pair a new server pair so I'm gonna download the latest because there's uh, updates just recently just this week to, that I'm gonna use so now what happens now is that uh, the mm, bits are, are downloaded uh, um, from the our site and then I'm gonna add a new server pair and say that these bits that I downloaded is gonna go in this new position here server free I'm gonna refresh that install and it suggests um, some ports for me and I'm gonna try to start those and it seems to go okay so that means that uh, I have an M driven server up and running at uh, port 504 so I'm gonna use this button to just set the current M driven server and uh, now it's 504 I'm gonna check on that one and uh, 
Um, actually, this is a new button that we should uh, mention. So, so this is um, before you had to upload the model and see what happened. But uh, this one shows you what will happen if you upload the model. So that's a good one if you're running them during server uh, straight against something that's really important. You might want to check what's going to happen prior to actually doing it. So currently there's no model here, so I'm going to upload this one and see that the database was created. And that would then mean that on this uh, URL, the turnkey server, since I pressed the rest aloud, um, I would expect to find a uh, rest service. Um, but in order to see anything, I'm going to do some, some data. I'm going to uh, go into this one. And I'm going to set the number here and put some value here. So in order to find the, the rest, um, things, I'm going to go to the wiki and see rest services in, in M driven. So this mentions a lot of how to pull information from other rest services. But uh, in order to, uh, to get uh, information, we should use this kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> URL. So let's see if I were to put that in, but use this address like this. And the VM name should then be the view one thing. And then and the ID is nine two. So I'm supposed to have it like this. And that way I get the information as rest instead. So that's uh, as before. Now pad and I remember this one. Um, now, if we want to actually send in data, um, we usually do that with a, a post. And uh, so, what we should do is to either uh, post to this URL or do other things and that the other things that are new is that we now allow for the different um, rest verbs called put patch and delete um, all of these go into the same thing but uh, if we make sure to have a uh, variable available in our view model that we're going to use as a target we will get the verb into this so what this means is if I simply were to add a column here, generic column, and saying that oh, this became very little, saying that this would be a variable, so it's uh, since it it begins with the small v it suggests that this is probably a variable that you want to add and i'm going to say yes and i'm going to say it's a string um, and it occupies the same so i'm going to change the the name on the on this to reflect what it is containing so this means that um, <coughs> when I yeah I guess when I go back here yeah now I must upload this um, new model to to the server so if the server restarts and I 
uh, refresh this I see that uh, this is set to get which is uh, the operator to that I um, expected it to have and what we can do is to go to thing like uh, postman which is a common tool for oh that was wrong but a common tool when um, working with rest services and I'm gonna use that to speed things up a bit I'm gonna do a let's see um, gonna do something new if I do a get on on this URL and send that I get the same data back and here I'm able to change it to a post and uh, if I do a post I should also have the post uh, endpoint and let's see if I can do that and then I get a rest verb of, of post so that's okay um, so what I can do with the, with this uh, with um, we're gonna try a few things more to use the put and then I need the put um, verb here and it says put so these are basically the same uh, tech it's just the uh, um, um, convention to use the different verbs for different things there's nothing stopping you from using them to other things so if we want to change this this data um, there are a couple of ways to influence data uh, send in new data over um, rest like this um, we can just use the view model columns to say that this is form data and the key some string should have the value hello and then that value would have been updated uh, all the other values that we haven't mentioned should stay the same but the values that we mention um, updates and this should of course also be true um, that the data is really updated and it's updated on uh, in the UI as well since this is automatically refreshed whenever changes are detected but what we can use this uh, um, verb for is to have unlinearities that we or logic that we want to apply um, so for example we could do um, an action here and what does actions do when we um, post or um, patch to them anything bright ish what will an action do uh, this is the same strategy as uh, the service side view models use um, all the actions will be executed on the service side once we push something so um, we could go like self dot sum string uh, and we use the same value and append an X so having done that uh, what will happen when we send in hello now with a patch nothing much let's see yeah so now I did that but I didn't upload the model so 
So I was still running on the old model. I'm back in Postman, I'm gonna send this patch. And now this turned to hello x. I sent in hello. And if I send in something else. So the um, values were applied first and then the actions were applied. And there's a trick to this that one could move the action column up if you would like the action columns to actually execute before you assign the data. So if we put it over here and upload that model. We should get a slightly different result. So now we got something else, some else here, but the X isn't present because the X was actually applied prior to uh, us assigning the value. We can prove this by extending this action and do uh, self some integer we add one to this one and if we upload that so then we would expect to um, see that this one actually proves that the action is running because it increases by one but since this one is uh, changed after the fact, we add an X, but then we assign this new value. So if we were to stop sending this value to it, um, we will again have the X's um, being added here. So why am I showing this? Well, uh, because what's good with the... Um, rest verb which in this case was patch is that we could have uh, a disable expression here so if the rest verb is um, let's say equal to um, patch so this is a read only expression just to uh, uh, go faster to the result I'm going to say it should be different than patch. If patch, we shouldn't do this action. And if I send in and uh, this patch now, it still does it. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so it's disabled if it's uh, different than patch. I, I uh, thought two times. I should only think one step at a time. It's not good for me to think too much. Um, so now it doesn't execute the action. But what if I do the same thing and do a post instead? That's the same logic, but the uh, um, rest verb will be different. So then it starts to count. Good. And if I do uh, the put is also supported here. Those all actually change the data, and if I send in this one, yeah, uh, so they work as expected. So that's a good way to um, use the different um, um, REST verbs to expose different type of functionality using the same view model, but applying the um, read-only 
rules to uh, um, to, to set the criteria what to actually execute. So if in the end I want to actually do allow a delete of this, and of course it would be nonsense to send in data to a delete, but you never know, it's uh, still um, valid according to the specification. Um, but then you could have an action that actually does self delete on the object and then it would only would be only be possible to, to run it once. Um, <clears throat> so having access to this, it's quite easy to uh, do any kind of uh, uh, logic. Let's say that a put actually should uh, um, create new uh, data. That would be an action that uh, simply does create on, on things and add things. So all the actions are valid in, in this sense. Um, so any questions on, on this? Another thing that we added in order to uh, accommodate uh, REST services better is if you have um, um, JSON data like this, which you always have if you do REST services, you can copy that and uh, from before we had the ability to, if, if we are on a specific, um, let's say that we have a new clause, we can just go here and say add attributes and associations and clauses from clipboard JSON or XML. So if we have XML or JSON in, in the clipbook, we can get that uh, uh, alike um, depending on how much data there is, we won't be able to guess the types because this didn't have any data on it, but uh, you get help to to fill this in. And it doesn't matter if it's a big structure, it will fill that in uh, as well. So that's a good thing that we had from before, but then um, we got a request that, uh, what about in view models? Could we get the same kind of idea in view models? So if we have a new view model with, uh, um, we could use the same clipbook uh, data to try to, uh, to to get the the definition from here. Of course, then we know even less what's uh, what it entails, what we should actually get, but. So this way we could actually do a um, um, something that both uh, exposes rests and pull rests uh, from the same server. That would be, of course, again, even more nonsense. But uh, if we do two M-driven systems that talk to each other, it would be a good uh, example of uh, decoupling things to do sort of multi microservices instead of doing one uh, bigger system. And uh, to facilitate uh, um, microservices, we often want to do um, an, a single sign on somehow to, to make sure that every system trusts the other uh, systems. And then we have what we talked about last time with the, the SAML or GVT tokens to, um, to really decouple this, the systems and, and allow them to log in um, in a safe way without uh, sharing a lot of passwords uh, in clear text between systems. Um, yeah, so how about that? Anyone doing uh, REST services? Daniel, are you exposing your data as REST services? Not maybe this way, but uh, in other ways to, to your front end systems? No, I'm using Web API at the moment. Mm. 
and unfortunately I have no M driven in the UI part because my co-workers doesn't want to learn M driven they want to do things the hard way mm -hmm. they feel they have more control or whatever they have a lot of time of, on their hands well a lot of old habits I suppose yes 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 so and uh, if you want to um, sort of uh, introduce them there's this uh, uh, the M driven thousand steps program that um, takes them quite a bit of course it's uh, uh, it's an investment to to look at that as well but um, um, and and the, I guess the the biggest selling point is to get uh, documentation as an effect of development so there's re really not much need to write down how things work once you have a model on how things work because it's faster to check the model than to um, to both write and, and read yeah I have a UML model for the business object and I look at that almost daily yeah but that's on the server side yes so and, and that's um, my experience as well as soon as you have a model and the uh, um, people ask you questions it's always the model that uh, shows up it's never what you wrote in some uh, document somewhere no, I gave up with the written documentation around 2014, I think, and haven't missed it since. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. So, and and uh, when it comes to documentation, we use the the wiki quite uh, hefty to to fill in um, what's not in in the model, so to speak. The um, how are you supposed to use these things and. Uh, how are you supposed to and and that's uh, quite uh, a good thing we uh, tend to set up a media wiki on each project of of larger size that we work with as well to pour in all the in-house knowledge on how things what we have said and how things are supposed to work and then uh, we point we don't uh, um, describe a lot of uh, model things there because that's better in the model but uh, when it comes to specific data um, and uh, what things mean and connection strings etc so there's a lot of, of those things yeah we do something similar but we're messing about with Jammer instead mm -hmm. okay is that um, does it have like a wiki part that you can well, it's a kind of threaded discussion, yeah. a kind of simple forum, kind of. Mm. And it's included in Microsoft Office and, well, it fits our needs. Mm. I haven't looked for anything better, really. So uh, I can uh, recommend to use the MediaWiki. I think it's pretty easy to install on Azure and everything. You can just click and, and uh, choose the right package uh, to, to get it to run. But then I've Again, it's uh, Unix uh, underneath, so <laughs> whenever there's an upgrade or something, it might be uh, a bit uh, tricky to to get it to run. But uh, yeah. it's it's a good um, um, medium uh, level to cut away with all the. Um, the good looks and just keep the information and uh, um, making it really easy to hyperlink between different stuff so what we use is to pour in whatever you have at hand or in your head just now and then uh, there's a slower process to uh, link that into the other things to to make it more readable and, and uh, easy to, to find so the, the, the curating of, of data is a sort of separate process from catching the data. And I think that's a good thing to separate those, those two processes because uh, catching should have uh, zero resistance. And uh, curating 
is always a, a, something that uh, you need to think about and take time and, and uh, redo and uh, do again. So the, yeah. I have a, a question on the uh, on the rest stuff to, to yeah. go back to a little bit. Um, so I, I I don't expose my stuff via REST, but I'm a REST consumer in terms of uh, um, usually from uh, services that provide mapping information, map data, a lot of map data, and of course a lot of that stuff is pretty voluminous. So I and and because I I, I actually wrote my interfaces to that stuff prior to a lot of the conveniences that you that have been introduced here I've just left them there but um, but if I was wanting to perhaps integrate some of those things more into uh, and the object yeah uh, the an object things what it, it when it's when you, when you're talking about receiving a lot of a lot of data a lot of X Y uh, you know coordinate information and uh, that's quite high resolution mm. um, what's are there any potential performance pitfalls so, um, doing it via this? Yeah, so good question. Um, so everyone is, is doing um, um, JSON when they expose data and, and it's quite common to have a paged uh, result set. So there's a, um, it's quite common that you use uh, a name in the data stating page one of 15 so that you are requested to send in a new page number and do multiple requests. That's one way to, to pull a lot, but um, there's nothing stopping anyone from, from doing very large result sets and that you might not even want to expose them as unique objects. You might want them, you might want to have them some other way. And, um, um, what we do allow for is to use the um, a specific naming convention. Uh, let's see if raw. Yeah, but the way case. I mean, the way it struck me was that um, it, it, it could be the, the higher level objects mm. you know, in the hierarchy. You know, you could handle this way, and then the, the lower level objects, which do contain perhaps the bulk of the of the data could be you know you could pull them in yeah so Separate. so there can be a mix of a very large hierarchy where you want to stop at a certain level and just yeah. catch the the json for that and keep the whole json as a text in in on that level that you stop at and uh, you can use this um um special name on, on any view model column uh, when consuming um, JSON called raw JSON and what we will do then is just take what's on the level from where you are and put that into the view model column uh, yeah. that's the expression of, of this so that's a good way to and, and this way you, you can easily do a multi-process uh, uh, handling so you receive the head and uh, maybe two levels down at the first uh, catch and that might be fast and then there's in the second level down there's a lot of raw JSONs that hasn't been resolved yet and you might want them resolved but you know that it will take time so then you can just have a sort of state machine that checks have I resolved these and then you could put that on the server side to continuously resolve these as they are found yeah I mean that, that sounds like probably the right solution and um, again another aspect of this uh, when thinking about it for map data I mean people are looking at maps and they're panning around and they're zooming in and they're zooming out so what what you end up doing because you don't like the the user to end up waiting for the map to to refresh after each thing is you end up doing a lot of um, uh, buffering yeah you know you'll be on a certain level at a certain resolution but you'll buffer mm. the images or core vectors you know for a for a high resolution for a low resolution for the for the surrounding yeah um, Ge you know, guessing what the user will files. do next yeah mm. 
And there are packages that do a lot about you mean brew tile and, and things like that that do a lot of that sort of stuff for you. But uh, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay, but that, yeah, yeah. So um, I had a similar situation with the um, information experience. They did the, a whole lot of. Uh, 3D visualization and and uh, when you walked around in the rooms, uh, there was uh, always everything was divided into small uh, like uh, cubes, and uh, you need to, to constantly guess what cubes to pull in in front of of the user to avoid uh, lagging of uh, the next the next step, so to speak. Exactly. That's mm. exactly the same sort of um, problem. Mm. Uh, so, to to pull in data, um, I'm gonna remove this one now to avoid. Uh, so I don't have to use it. If I save this and press play here, and I pull data from the M driven server, and I start the debugger, and so what we can do here uh, yeah let's see uh, since the debugger um, doesn't actually have a view model but we added uh, a the self VM variable to, to be able to test these things easily so um, you can do rest get and from rest Get you're supposed to have the uh, URL and the user and password. So let's see where did it go? My notepad here. So I'm gonna get from this address. And then currently we are not checking on user or password and we don't have a nesting with extra data. So that's um, the way we would uh, pull data from, from our own service that's running. And of course, this could be any service. Now, if I wanted to um, check that we really um, fulfill a contract here and, and have, have a user and a password, um, I guess that would be doable by and just um, setting on this view model that uh, we must have a um, an access group that is is logged in and the access group uh, would be is defined so this is the standard access group that's just checking the uh, current user it that it's not empty and uh, if I then go to let's see uh, I upload this model and I go to the UI and I refresh the UI and it says, whoa, you can't see this view because that has an, an access group on it and you must be logged in. And uh, <clears throat> then I need to register a user. I'm gonna take my go to user. So, um, and if I were to run the this one now, I get access denied. But if I then send in a user,
I get the access to it and if I were to answer the wrong or give the wrong password I would get access denied so um, that's the way you can control it and it's also possible to have like uh, um, bearer tokens and uh, then you would go instead of the username you would uh, use bearer here and then have a kind of token here and then a way to uh, identify the token on the other end that you can do with the uh, um, um, JSON web tokens to um, to remove this exposure of the um, password this way yeah good um, so that we covered uh, some of the rest services that we we're able to uh, distinguish the different rest uh, verbs in order to uh, allow different kind of actions uh, and we can control what actions we want to execute once we um, get external uh, interested parties starting to call us with different uh, rest verbs and that makes it possible to do a sort of a headless um, m driven system completely and of course headless systems might be good uh, but it's always um, good to have a simple UI to, to check the data and uh, to visually check the data and uh, that would be a good thing to to use the, uh, the view models um, UI hints for. Of course since if we don't want to use the UI hints for this we would uh, probably uncheck this box um, and leave that field just not to confuse us so when this is uh, not checked there will be no UI hints for this at all and uh, um, when we document it and, and look at this view model in the um, in the diagrams etc it will only show the the, the tree just to um, make clear that this is not uh, designed for um, UI it's it's just the data tree as you see here uh, if you want to do a headless and one thing that comes to mind is that there is quite a few um, ways to document headless or, or rather rest apis uh, with the um, i can't remember the name but there's a, a a swagger i think it's called a a, a strategy to pull um web-based um, documentation for the web uh, apis that you expose as rest services and Possibly we will do an extension to the turnkey server to actually produce those based on the uh, code comments and things that you can easily write in in the view models to to furthermore pull the documentation to the model and uh, allowing uh, everyone to focus on the documentation rather than the implementation of things. Good. Cool. Then I got to show those new things um, that uh, we um, have the, I guess the, the major thing is the rest verb to allow to, to, allow to catch different actions from here. Very good. If you come up with uh, more um, suggestions like you did Derek now for the um, project templates let us know and um, we will um, bake that into the timeline very good yeah thank you good Dennis do you have anything to any no, really, but I mean, it will be useful to 
trying to use some of the new features of the like REST services you, you showed. I mean, we don't use it a lot, even when we have like Derek, uh, like talked about the map. We have the project with the map, but we implemented it in the different way. So it's like based on the trunky, so we don't need to call like the REST services. But it's, it's like it looks good. I mean, the ability even to execute actions right now it sounds really like promising. Yeah, because then you can do like unlinear things that uh, w whatever you want really. Yeah. And I guess yeah, one thing that I should mention just before we go is the, the I said the raw JSON would be good to to catch when you import thing, but things. Uh, at a certain level, but it's also good for overriding the output. So um, here you can override the output to uh, a service if if you don't want it to um, get the uh, the standard behavior is to pull everything in the view model as JSON and and show that. But uh, here you can do. Uh, pretty much anything. And uh, if we were to execute that, yeah, we need to uh, upload that. And head back to this one, and since this Debugger is started with one model. We need to re. I'm gonna copy this. Uh, Reread the model to restart it, and then. And yeah. Okay. I'm gonna restart it this way. Maybe we lost the variable. Show, show, show. show. So. Uh, as we have controlled what we send back, we can do um, um, any action to, to send back anything we see fit here. So we don't need to um, send back the, the JSON from the view model, we can send anything. Good, gonna um, stop there, stop a little bit early, but um, um, hope you will find use of uh, logic like this at some point in the near future. So we try. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.